our next speaker after Sridhar, who will give us the whole uh, project and what it can mean for the people there. We also have um, a young journalist, Abir, who works with Paranjoy, who will tell us more um, because of his many uh, trips to the place um, and his uh, articles that have been well read across the globe. Sridhar now is a geologist from IIT Roorkee and uh, managing trustee of Environmix Trust. He has worked with mainstream exploration organizations, the Atomic Minerals Division the government of the Government of India and ONGC. He is a founding executive member of the National Green Tribunal Bar Association. Sridhar Ramamurthy is currently also the convener of the um, International Committee of the NGO Forum on ABB as also the, um, uh, you know, a core group member of the Asian People's Movement on Debt and Development. Sridhar, on Adani. And Sridhar, you have begun screen sharing right away. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Adani and his uh, company, the... Uh, Adani Jharkhand Power Limited is uh, building a power plant in uh, the Goda district of uh, Jharkhand, which is adjoining Bangladesh. And this uh, great Adani ripoff is uh, you know, bringing coal from the indigenous or aboriginal lands in Queensland, uh, taking it to uh, you know, the Abbott Point port in, uh, in Australia bringing it to Adani zone port in Dhamra, uh, in Orissa, then lugging it to Goda in Jharkhand, producing power and transmitting that power to Bangladesh. So this is the biggest brainwave that they have thought of in terms of ripping off money everywhere and also you know, kind of uh, creating a lot of problems for people across the world. So these are some scenes uh, in Goda, like how they uh, started putting up their board, fence the place, people protested. Some of these people are those people who were, uh, those who are uh, now filed the cases on the uh, land acquisition, which was uh, irregular. And uh, this fourth girder was uh, laid uh, now, you know, amidst the lockdown, so you can see whether uh, it's the pandemic and the lockdown, uh, it doesn't apply to Adani. Uh, and uh, he had been going on and now very recently, you might have seen a wonderful short uh, video that uh, Carbon Copy had made and I'll share that after this uh, meeting also, uh, which showed, uh, you know, how uh, the uh, Adanis have uh, you no know, kind of uh, uh, continued work during this period. Then, what is it that you know uh, the real problems right on the ground? Apart from the fact that this was a land where, in the 1800s, the Adivasis of that area, the Santalis, uh, fought hard, and uh, what was called the Hul Revolution. The Sido Kanu brothers were killed in that process. And uh, the British realized this and brought on the protective law called the Santal Pargana Tenancy Act, where no Adivasi was allowed to sell land to anyone, any outsider. And even if they had to sell between themselves, they had to approach the government and inform them. But you know, this law was diluted and then you know, they sought an uh, opinion from the Advocate General who gave them a favorable kind of a letter to start the land acquisition. So, the land acquisition is one major kind of uh, irregularity that has happened in this case. The other one which I have been pursuing very closely along with our legal team, the Legal Initiative for Forests and Environment, has been the process of granting the environmental clearance. The project site, you know, uh, is uh, not according to our contention was the project site was not according to the siting guidelines, which said that if it is fertile agricultural land, you will not use it. 
but this was fertile agricultural land. They had no permission to withdraw water from the local river. The pre-feasibility report said that they will take water from the Ganges, but the environmental assessment said that they will take water from the Chir River. They provided, uh, they said that they will import coal from Australia, Indonesia, but not knowing what the quality of the coal would be, they had already predicted what kind of air pollution would be there. And they had not even disclosed what will be the mode and route by which it will be. The, uh, the fuel will come to the plant. But despite this, the uh, Environmental Appraisal Committee started uh, processing it. And uh, the, uh, the EIA Resource and Response Center, which is a joint uh, initiative of life, uh, environics, and uh, peace institute, uh, we had uh, raised this issue uh, way back in uh, 2016 when the appraisal process started. As the appraisal process was going on, they went on uh, to give various kind of answers every time. You know, they said uh, they they are going to do the uh, you know, baseline study despite the process despite the terms of reference not being granted, saying that. It will be at their risk and its at own cost. And the committee also agreed that if it is going to be at their own cost, as if in these cases, the government or somebody else gives them money. But it just said the committee agreed for the same at the you know, project proper and zone cost. So without applying its mind on numerous aspects, the uh, what the appraisal committee started focusing was on the the water, whether water was available or not. So we we went on pursuing the whole issue of water, and they they persisted that they were going to take water from the Chir River. Then what what was uh, very very crazy was when we proved that there was no water in the Chir River, they said that you know uh, they would make a big uh, reservoir, pump water during the uh, monsoon period and store water. And how, how will they store? They will make a 441 acre reservoir and which will be, you know, like one meter bund will be connect, uh, uh, created and they will fill water and store water for it. Then we proved that, you know, even that would not be sufficient because there will be evaporation and uh, then they said you know they will put up uh, they'll put up uh, solar panels on top of that uh, 441 acres of uh, uh, reservoir when once we proved that was also not possible and then it was actually requiring a much larger reservoir and you know uh, allow for a lot of evaporation in the meantime they had approached to take water from the ganges so though there was an intention to take water from the Ganges, which the pre-feasibility report had hinted, they had just dragged on this idea of a Chir River simply because you know they wanted the process to go on. Otherwise, the right from the beginning there would have been big hue and cry as to why Ganges water is being given for this project. So now you know as a fate accompli, now a lot of things have happened. Now give us water from the Ganges was a was a ploy that they had played in this. And what, what has happened, you know, at the time of, uh, and in uh, 2017, the clearance was granted. And then we went to the court, uh, to the Green Tribunal, almost immediately challenging this environmental clearance. From one minute. Yeah, huh? one minute. So since then, you know, it dragged on. What, what is now essentially uh, the situation is on 3rd of August, the Green Tribunal has asked them to answer several questions that we have raised and has also said, if they are not able to answer, why the work should not be stopped? So that, which is our prayer saying that you stop work so that we can solve all these problems. So let us hope on the 3rd day, we definitely know that they don't have answers for it, but we also know that they are powerful enough 
to do other things, crazy things to enable that. And I'll just run through the rest of my slides saying that SEPCO uh, is the EPC contractor. The boiler technology is from Babock and Wil Wilcox in Beijing. The turbo generators are from General Electric. And this is an example of how, you know, uh, clearances are granted for him. The forest rights, uh, you know, issue is an important thing in India. But when it came to the railway line, it says uh, that, you know, it is making use of the relaxation and linear projects. And therefore, uh, you know, this forest clearance is given. If you see, they said that projects of their kind should be kept away from it. And what has happened is uh, the CERC uh, in 2018 said that Adani Power and APP, it's clarified that the generating so ex exclusively to any particular independent shall not con come under the scope of this regulation. So you find that, you know, the regulations that are meant for everybody doesn't apply for Adani. So the list of scams is actually endless, you know, from airports to seaports, from coal to diamond, you know, someday you must all uh, listen to Paranjay on that. But uh, like a prominent ruling party MP here called Subramaniam Swami says that, you know, he calls him the greatest trapeze artist who's hoodwinking the bank with his debts and yet he goes scot free. This is the latest uh, ravage of uh, Adani. This is the Neveli Lignite Corporation's uh, uh, project where they became the mine development organization two years before the project even started. They were given this rights and uh, so this is how you know he, Adani is one of the three scrap dealers of 80s who have made it big in India. The Adani, the uh, Agarwal, the Anil Agarwal and Lakshmi Mittal and many of them you know have uh, you know, such big enterprises but I can tell you that you know uh, one brick down this edifice everything will fall you know and uh, that is how these enterprises are. And please, you know, look at the Avaaz petition that we have put in along with the local communities. Uh, let us take out the bricks of this big edifice. Thank you very much.